Hello and welcome to another episode of Montclair News Lab. I'm Stefano Kedishi. And I'm Erin Lawler. Here's what's coming up this week. First, a look at how misinformation is influencing the 2022 elections. Uh, in the 2020 midterms, there's a huge amount of candidates that are basically running on a set of lies. Next, MSNBC President Rashida Jones joins us for an exclusive interview. Sometimes mis disinformation can, can manifest itself not only in what is being said, but what's being not said. And later, we take a look behind the scenes at how Montclair student media are covering the midterm elections, part of our semester-long focus. Vote 2022, what's at stake? We'll be talking about misinformation, inflation, reproductive rights, voting restriction. As young people shift towards getting more of their news from social media, the threat of fake news has become a major issue. Henry Tai takes a look at the rise of misinformation online and how it's affecting this year's midterms. What if that raid happened to be at his personal residence? TikTok. It's changing the way our generation watches content, interacts with one another, and with midterms coming up, it's changing the truth too. As technology evolves, so does misinformation. Conspiracy has migrated from Facebook to younger platforms. TikTok caters content to its users through an algorithm. This mysterious AI favors posts that evoke emotional reactions. Dr. Joel Penny is an expert on youth culture and new media. He says the stakes are high this election. You know, we're at a pretty dire point in American democracy. Uh, in the 2020 midterms, there's a huge amount of candidates that are basically running on a set of lies uh, regarding um, the previous election cycle and, you know, claiming that, uh, you know, Trump won the election when he clearly did not. In countries like the Philippines, disinformation on TikTok played a big role in conservative victories. And now, with important elections happening across the U.S., we're seeing fake news shift the talking points farther and farther to the right. That is now not just a fringe conspiracy theory, it has become incredibly mainstreamed. And it's not just showing up on fake news websites. This is covered by many um, seemingly legitimate news companies. Anyone on TikTok can slap a logo on their profile and pretend to be an official source, hiding their misinformation in plain sight. For every CNN or Fox News, there are dozens of imitations hoping to pass off their disinformation as legitimate. And basically it makes them look like they are just as official as the New York Times or CNN or any major news company. We talked with people across Montclair State campus to see how they're staying informed. The place where I get my news from is predominantly social media. I'm going on Instagram, going on TikTok. Probably just like uh, my email, you know, the little emails that they send. I get my news from television news and the New York Times. I follow now this and the New York Times Instagram page. There's nothing inherently wrong with any of those things. You know, it's good to just get like a quick, just like a quick idea of what's going on in the world. As if the sea of false information wasn't enough, human rights organization Global Witness found TikTok is approving ads that break its own guidelines on misinformation. But not all hope is lost. Dr. Penny also gave us a few ways to stay informed understanding, you know, what is the news landscape, what kinds of sources are doing even basic things like fact checking. I'm Henry Tai, getting a handle on the truth. With Focus Vote 2022, what's at stake? MSNBC President Rashida Jones made history last year, becoming the first African American woman to run a major cable news network. Last week, she was honored with the School of Communication and Media's inaugural Media Leadership Award, recognizing individuals who have a significant national impact in media. I sat down with her during the event to discuss her life and career. I started out by asking her, what was a pivotal moment in your life that made you know you wanted to pursue journalism? I've known for a very, very long time. Um, I knew from elementary school that I wanted to be a writer. Um, I didn't know that, that there was a way to bring writing and leadership and public service all into one role. And it was, it was once I started college, I was a freshman at Hampton University and realized that you could do all of those things and you could do it for television. Um, and that's when I truly found my following. So we know your successes, but could you tell me a failure that um, happened that you learned from? I always say as a producer, you don't know how to produce until you ruin a show. I still have the five minute, you probably have never heard of this before, VHS tape of my first five minute newscast that I created. And I recently went back to look at the scripts and I kind of self critiqued myself. Now, I wrote this script well over 20 years ago, but even now I'm still looking and thinking, okay, I wish I knew back then not to write this way. What do you think brings a story from being good to great? 
it's all about the characters. It's all about the people. It's all about the human connection. And it doesn't matter what beat you cover, whether it's investigative, whether it's consumer, whether it's business. I think the thing that makes stories sing and, and, and the thing that will stick with you are the, the characters involved. So some say that the biggest challenge facing journalism right now is um, disinformation. Um, what are you doing at MSNBC to like combat against that? So it's been something we've really focused on and, and it's, it's kind of a new beat for us. We've had to build entire units uh, that focus on disinformation and how do we educate our audience. We've had to take, I think, an even more critical eye at information that we get uh, and, and what is the source? What is the motivation? Sometimes mis disinformation can, can manifest itself not only in what is being said, but what's being not said. And so I think we've had to develop kind of a transparent relationship with the audience to explain more process reporting, process language. Here's what we know, here's what we don't know. This is where this came from, and this is why we're questioning it in a way that we've, we haven't had to do my entire career. As we get closer to election, I'm sure a lot has gone in on your part for the night. Can you tell us some of the major themes that you'll be covering? We've really focused this this um, election on the issues that are driving voters. And so, you know, there's so many components to covering politics. There's the horse race. Who's ahead? What are the polls saying? Um, what are exit polls telling you about the sentiment? But we've really focused on the issues. What's driving voters to come out and vote for specific candidates. And so things like the economy, uh, voters are really motivated this cycle about how the economy is affecting them. You know, we call them kitchen table issues. What are, what are issues that are driving people to leave their home, cast a ballot and vote for a specific candidate? What advice would you give young journalists like us? Dream, dream bigger, and then think about what is five steps ahead of that. I think you know, ambition, and, and I, would, I would say your generation has no shortage of ambition per se, but think about how you can change the world. Like you guys really have the power to think differently, to, do, to, to operate differently, to, to transcend the industry and platforms and, and create something that doesn't exist. And so on a macro level is dream beyond what you think you can do. Thank you to Rashida Jones for being so generous with her time and her insights. Next week, months of research and reporting will come to fruition. Students from WMSC, Montclair News Lab, and the Montclairian are teaming up to cover the midterms and how they will impact our future. We call the project Focus Vote 2022, What's at Stake? Our reporters find out more from student leaders at the Montclairian, WMSC, and Montclair News Lab. Hello, my name is Crystal Durham and I'm here with the Editor-in-Chief of the Montclarian, Emma Coughlin. As you know, the focus topic is based around election night. How is your publication is really, how are they going to really speak to the election night and really get students involved in that conversation? So we do an election paper every year. We don't, we don't do a lot of outside of Montclair State, um, so there is, you know, a polling place on campus, so we'll usually do a little photo essay on that. Um, we'll also utilize our opinion section to discuss the different candidates um, for some of the bigger races. I know that you're really pushing for your publication to really be a multimedia platform. How are you planning to do that? We want to have someone on the ground taking pictures, taking videos, talking to students, and posting that on Instagram, which is our most popular platform. And we have a TikTok now, so some of it will probably be on TikTok as well. That's great. Is there any last thing you want to say to students at Montclair State about voting and just the election night in general? I think everyone uh, should exercise their right to vote. Um, it is a, a right after all, and uh, you, should, uh, you should definitely honor that. Thank you so much for today. Yeah. I'm Crystal Durham for Montclair News Lab. Hi, I'm Anish Patel. I'm here with Aiden Ivers, Assistant News Director of WMSC, Montclair State University's college radio station. What is WMSC's role in focus this semester? So our role in Focus is to create news content that we can use and utilize during our live broadcast of election night. Can you go farther into what the nightly election broadcast is going to look like? So we're going to start around the evening or close to the evening when here on the East Coast our polls close around the Tri-State area. And we're also going to focus on um, various municipalities within New Jersey, within New York and Pennsylvania, along with the governor races in those states as well. 54% reporting, uh, so obviously anybody's game still at this point. Now Focus allows for a very unique collaboration at Montclair State. What does this collaboration mean for Montclair State students? 
So I think it, the idea comes up where even though we work in separate spaces for WMSC, News Lab, and the Montclairian, when we come together and we put our minds together to get work done, our possibilities are endless. And when it comes time for important things like this each semester for focus, coming together and working together for in a different special and different um, topics that our clubs and organizations specialize in when it comes to covering campus news and providing the best insight for our student body. The possibilities that we, that we can come together and bring to fruition as the School of Communication and Media is endless. It could be anything. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Aiden. Thank you, Anish. From our News Lab, I'm Anish Patel. I'm here with Julia Egan, executive producer of The Focus production this semester. Julia, thank you for joining me. Yeah, thank you for having me. So my first question to you is for audience members, for viewers who don't know what Focus is, can you explain to them what it is and uh, basically what you're working on this semester? Yeah, so Focus is a show we do every year where we focus on one issue that's big to our world that's really affecting us. So we've done climate change, we've done disruption, which was covering the pandemic, and now we're doing Focus 2020, Vote 2022, What's at Stake, where we'll be talking about all the things that are most important to voters as we go into the midterm elections. Okay, very well. And uh, one of the themes um, of the show is uh, misinformation, right? Yeah, so we have mis we'll be talking about misinformation, inflation, reproductive rights, voting restriction. But yeah, misinformation is one of the biggest topics we're talking about. Okay, and very all the topics that you're covering in this show, like misinformation, um, reproductive rights, all these things, these things are timely and they're very interesting. Uh, going off of what you're saying about misinformation, um, in terms of the midterm elections this year, how is uh, misinformation affecting them? Misinformation is affecting it because it's just how everybody's getting their information. Um, the amount of misinformation that's spread through things like TikTok, Facebook, just social media in general has rose. And a lot of voters now who are over 18 get a lot of their news from TikTok and online. So we'll, so a lot of um, the stuff that we see that is incorrect, we'll see when it comes to the polls. Okay. And in terms of your role as executive producer of this show, what do you enjoy most about the production of the show and, and how everything's um, working and coming together? Yeah, so my favorite part of the show is getting to work with a lot of people. I get to work with a bunch of professors, a bunch of students. Every production, I always get to meet a lot of new people. We collaborate with our radio station, WMSC. We collaborate with uh, Montclairian, our newspaper, our sports network. So just a big collaboration, and that's my favorite part of it. Awesome. Okay. So that's basically it. A little bit of uh, a snippet of what you can catch for this semester's Focus Show. Focus Vote 2022, What's at Stake? You can catch it on hawkplus.tv at 7 p.m. on Monday, November 7th. Julia, thank you for joining us again. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is a great collaboration of all the student media platforms. You'll be able to watch the News Lab special on Election Eve, Monday, November 7th at 7 p.m. on hawkplus.tv. You can also find full election coverage at WMSC all day election day into the night. Make sure you also check out the Montclairian's coverage at themontclairian.org. Well, that's all we have for this week's episode of Montclair News Lab. Make sure to check back Hawk Plus to find new episodes. Until then, I'm Aaron Lawler. And I'm Stefano Kadishi.